and that was a, we had a big round table discussions about that and we found that to be very fruitful I suppose in, in thinking about behaviour management and how the kids are turning the tables on ourselves and thinking how do, as a kid how do they see us that was um, so this is this year's data and I have to be honest that the good bits down the bottom mm. only that we've got 16 grades only out of about five that this data came from I could have put all the other stuff but we wanted it to look a bit good so um, well, we tweaked it we, we polished it up and for you. to be honest the ones the never the none actually probably came from my grade because it's high on my agenda and so but it did come out so at least it's starting to come out in some of the grades it hasn't come out in all and we decided when we looked at the data we, we, we realized we need to analyze this data how do we bridge the gaps between the different teaching teachers in the grades that's something we need to sit down with leadership and analyze and where do we go from here but um, what we did what we did see is in a few of the grades the words rights and responsibilities came out um, speaking to them nicely the words reminding in uh, in one of mine I always say you're infringing on, you know so we talk about infringing on someone's right so those words came through which is what I wanted to see but it didn't it didn't come across as, as much as I would have liked um, down the bottom we get you know how many times a day does your mm. teacher yell rise a voice never none she's never mean that's all about me I just it's not, no. but that, that is yeah but there are a few people that it is creeping into as well yes you guessed it five times for the naughty people was in my grade Lily actually I've got, got a naughty 13. bunch Lily actually got 13 <laughs> times we don't know where that data came from so we're just assuming it's wrong so we left that off too okay Okay, so as a follow-up um, to all of this, what have we done? In PLTs, our staff have, has, pardon me, our staff have worked collaboratively to rewrite our startup programs, as I said uh, earlier, and that meant they had to incorporate um, the personal and communal responsibilities. Laura and I conducted workshops, um, and that was just to sort of have a practice session with the non-verbal, the verbal hinting, and the dialogue for responding to the different categories of students. And that was an eye-opener too, for both of us too. Team leaders um, had the opportunity to use the general and specific hinting, so we gave them the look and all those things that Ray talks about um, in his book. And of course, Laura and I have got our personal copies and we read those religiously. Every night. Absolutely. <laughs> So we had uh, the restatements of expectations, the I messages and the direct demands and questioning, all of that to address inappropriate behaviour. Our staff were also introduced to the dialogue and how to respond to the different categories of um, students. And then they're, they're encouraged, not so much asked, but they're encouraged to trial them and trial these approaches and strategies in their classroom. And I think that's where Laura was saying things are happening in the classroom. Yes, they were. Laura and I were standing there and saying, I can see two people on that table waiting for three people yes and so forth so all the I mess the I messages the demands the the hinting the look all of that was happening uh, as well as that we included the at our PLT meetings as part of the protocols that were set up early in the year we included an AIZ sharing component but it was also a challenging component not so much coming to the PLT meeting and saying look this is what I'm doing it's so fantastic give it a go we were actually challenged why are you doing that what is, what is working and why is it not what are you going to do about it now if the parts the, the components that aren't working what is it that you're going to change so it was a real challenging component to our PLT meetings we then um, allowed our staff to trial these new strategies and techniques in their classroom and uh, as I said earlier they all came on board and they were really happy to because I think that comfortable factor was there because of the way it was presented to them in a non-threatening way and of course uh, currently as we speak the behaviour management has formed a basis for our PLPs and our peer observation so as Laura said earlier on Laura and I aren't asking the questions of the students it's actually part of our peer observation where the buddy is actually asking, coming into your classroom, observing and asking those children, carrying out a survey and then giving you that feedback. So that's a promising aspect too in terms of what our follow-up entail, the fact that it is now part of our PLP and peer observation. 
from from there, teams got together. We had shown them the community kids and all that sort of stuff. Staff got together in their teams what would work for them. The grade five, six team took the community kids, but then took it a step further. That the weekly community kids would then become the community helpers on a Friday. So on a Friday, those those um, community kids go with one teacher, and in the staff room that. All the teachers have listed jobs that they would like to be done, the gardening, weeding, watering, whatever it may be. And those kids have to go out into the school community and help. We thought, oh, maybe we could reward them. And then we went, uh -huh, that doesn't. that's not the philosophy. What could we do? Oh, they could do work. But they actually love it. They really, last Friday, I had the community helpers. It was boiling hot. Kids mm. loved it. They're, dust, they're sweeping, they're weeding. They love it. So Doing that was Laura's what, work. Sorry? Doing Laura's doing work. My, doing my work. No. Really? It's, you know, so they do gardening, whatever, whatever teachers put on the board, that's what gets done. It's been, other groups modified it. Instead of nominating a child for a community kid, they called it community star. And it's the whole grade. And if anyone saw any behaviour, they could just put that up. Uh, in my grade, we have a, or in the 5 6 section, we have a community notice board where kids can post letters on the board for themselves for each other we also that's the forum that kids can write what's working well in the class what's not working well um, and what things they could change and we then have a community meeting with protocols that we follow the grade one twos i think did friendship flowers with the kids name in the middle and the petals the kids would stick on with um, communal behaviors that they noticed preps have a check-in similar to the spectrum but much simpler so it's easy for preps they just need to know, are they being responsible or irresponsible? That's as far as they could go at that point. The, the preps would take that further during the year, but at the start, that was where they went. And grade one, two had a similar check-in. Okay, and that leads us to, or brings us to our academic school visit, where um, Professor Ramon Lewis, Ray, um, attended our school with his assistant. He actually visited our school on the 14th of May and I think that was about the same time that most of the other schools were getting visits. So our initial meeting uh, was with the former SIG group, which is now the SIT group, and that consisted of our principal, the assistant principal, the leading teachers, and Laura and uh, myself as the learning leaders. We actually um, presented a brief outline of our journey, our adventure, and that we had undertaken to date. We shared a PowerPoint with Ray, and just to show him the different classroom management strategies that were implemented, and the various classroom displays, which you've seen some of. By the way, if you want the full version, I'm happy to put it on the website. Uh, so the other thing we did was um, we allowed Bremont and uh, his assistant to observe teachers hinting, using the statements carry out because they did classroom walkthroughs and visits and Ray also interviewed various um, students within the classroom walkthroughs that we had and that was predominantly, predominantly with the older children. Okay, following that, we uh, Laura and I scheduled um, we organised the day in such a way that we had scheduled meetings with the various PLTs. So Ray sat through and uh, met the one two, uh, Peter two, Peter two it should be actually. So he met with the PLTs and of course staff had the opportunity there to share and discuss dialogue that was appropriate for the different categories of children and more so the challenging students. And they also had the opportunity to clarify any concerns or any questions that they would have liked to have um, clarified by Ray. So. One, two, three, four, and of course, the five sixes. So it was a great day all in all. And then of course, Ray had the opportunity, as I said, um, to be involved in the classroom um, walkthroughs and have a chat to some of the children. And the day ended with um, Ray addressing the whole staff. And of course, from that came the feedback and the recommendations for our school, Thomastown Meadows Primary. So his recommendation at that point was to highlight the three rights. Now we had two of them, the right to be physically safe and to learn as much as possible. And Ray suggested that we include the emotional safety. And we've done that since through visual representation of the rights and we've got them displayed in classrooms but also in classrooms facing out so that you can see them in the yard. And they're very visual 